Oh man, it's the Vault Hunter. You are awesome. Didn't you fight Terramorphous? I fought a big creature like that once. He was a big whale squid with a hundred tentacles. You ever fought anything with tentacles? Oh, of course you have. Terramorphous had tentacles. How silly of me. Uh, now, where was I? Oh, right. The whale creature. His name was Blowhole the Apocalypse. I call him the Apocalypse for short. And he attacked my hometown of Tsunami's Edge when I was but a little girl. Have you ever been to Tsunami's Edge? Great town. Nice beaches, great food, and the cost of living is just so low. Ever, even being a single grandmother and working part time at a skag meat processing facility, I was still able to provide for Mr. Little Torque. We may not have been able to afford the finer things in life like food, but we got by. After all, Mr. Torg and I didn't have anything but one another after that horrible gas leak blew up the iridium mine, killing my son and his lovely wife. <sighs> but from that day onward, my, li my little Mr. Torg vowed to conquer explosions themselves. Oh, in an effort to avenge his fallen parents and... Oh, man! I've forgotten what I was talking about. Where was it? Oh, right! Blowhole the Apocalypse! So anyway, I was wrestling blowholes to the ground. I had my bicep curled around his blueberry throat. Blueberry. Sorry, I meant to say blubbery. I've got blueberries on the brain, I guess. I grew up in my backyard. Mr. Torg helped me. Uh, we helped me plant them. Thanks again for that, grandson. Uh, anyway, I have my bicep around his blubbery throat, and Mr. Torg starts crying because he really likes whale squids, and he doesn't want to see me hurt one. So I let the whale go after giving him a punch in the eyeball so he'll remember me. It swam away into the ocean, and I had Mr. Torg drive me to an ice cream cream parlor. He got me Rocky Road, because Rocky Road's my favorite. I'm extremely partial to the way that the marshmallows act like little landmines of flavor amidst the battleground of chocolate. What's your favorite ice cream? Is it pistachio? I bet it's pistachio. Oh, that reminds me. You'll never who you'll never guess who I saw today. Pistachio the Amazing! He's a magician who studied under Crazy Earl, so he's got that weird mustache, you know, but you, you, you saw him make a rack hive disappear. A whole rack hive! I said to Mr. Torque, Mr. Torque, wasn't that amazing? And he said, yes it was, Grandma. Didn't you say that, high five? You remember saying that? And we stood in line afterwards and got his autograph. I thought I had it somewhere around here, but it's probably in the attic. I'd really go, I would really ought to go up there and clean it out one of these days. I have so many little keepsakes up there. Are you, are you paying attention, right? Say, what's my favorite flavor of ice cream? Well? Uh, Jay? Pecans and marshmallows. No, no, no. What was my fa what's my favorite flavor of ice cream? It was uh, pralines and cream. Are you even listening, Jay? It's pralines and cream. Are you even listening? It's pralines and cream. Oh, good, chat. You're listening. Good, good, good to hear. <laughs> good to hear you're listening, chat. Good. Very nice. I was a little worried that you might not be listening. Oh well. Anyway. Okay, so you're listening. How wonderful. You're an even better listener than my old pet rack, Bisto. Bisto was such a sweetie. Have you ever had a pet rack? If you can tame them, they're the sweetest pet you'll ever have. Oh, he used to just sit on my soldier and bite chunks of flesh out of my neck to pass the time. I still remember the way he used to tweet. He went, tweet, tweet. It was so cute. I had a conversation with him once. I said, Mr. Bisto. He liked being called Mr. Bisto. It made him feel like an aristocrat. I said, Mr. Bisto, you're looking very cute today. And he said, oh, thank you. That's so nice. Or he, he, he tweeted in that way and made me uh, know that's how he felt. And then he lowered his little head like he was taking a bow. Oh, it was so adorable. Bisto was my third pet rack. The first one I had, Woody. He got hit by a train. Then I had Anita. She got shot up trying to take vengeance on the train that killed Woody. And then I found Bisto, making little poops on a windmill outside our house. After Mr.
Mr. Torg and I wrestled her to the ground, did a flying pile driver off a nearby tower tree, got him straight in the spine, brought him down. We brought him in and fed him some skag steaks until he decided he loved us. I still miss Beast though sometimes. He died just he just died of old age. Rack don't live much longer than a few years, but I treasured the time we had together. Poor Mr. Torg. When Beasto died, he cried for a week. The kids made fun of him at school, but I told him not to pay them any mind. That's right, high five. Is there something wrong? You look confused, Vault Hunter. Oh! You probably haven't heard anyone call Mr. Torque high five before. The world may know him as Mr. Torque, but the Flexingtons always referred to him using his middle name. It's a Flexington family tradition after all. To use your grandfather or grandmother's name as your own middle name. And my husband, High Five Flexington, God rest his soul, was the best grandfather Mr. Torg could have ever asked for before he passed. He taught Mr. Torg dang near everything he knew about fire ops. Without fi High Five's teachings, I don't think Torg Corporation would exist at all. Gosh, I still remember the first gun Mr. Torg tried to make after his parents died. A Jacob shotgun with a stick of dynamite attached to the barrel. Torg nearly blew, up, blew his face off, but he got up, dusted his mustache off, and swore. By the time he reached the age of 11, he would make a gun that fired explosions without killing its operator. Oh, and by golly, he did. It took a couple of dozen prototypes before he got it. Uh, the right combination of gun parts and explosives, right? But he, once he did, woo wee! I'll never forget the plume of smoke that used to be my neighbor's homestead. They were jerks, though. <sighs> so it's okay. Gosh, I've been talking your ear off for some time, haven't I? It's so kind of you to listen for this long. I've taken up too much of your time already. Please, don't feel you need to stick around any longer. Woo! Was that it? Part one. Oh my god. You muted me, by the way. I, no, I didn't. Yeah, you did. When you asked me for what the, what the ice cream was, I was telling you. I actually said pralines and cream. No, you were but... very hard to understand. Oh, really? I didn't mute oh, you. I okay. just could not understand what the fuck you were saying. All right. Oh, okay. I was just speaking in a really stupid voice, so. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that was 80 lines. That was 80 lines. Oh my god. The next one is 180 lines. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, have at it. You know, that's just <laughs> do your thing. <laughs> he had the mustache at the age of five. Yes. Yes, he did. Oh God, Grandma Torg. What a what a beautiful wow. All She's right. Beautiful. I'm looking at a picture of her. <laughs> now for scene two. Probably not going to be streaming much more after this because my voice is going to be fucking dead. Anyway. Oh, you still want to talk to me? How incredibly sweet of you. Say, you'll never guess who I saw today. Captain Scarlet. She was robbing my retirement home with a few of her brigands and I recognized her from her wanted poster and I said, oh hey, you fought the vault hunter, didn't you? She bowed all elegantly and said something like, indeed I did, madam, and said that you were really good at fighting and that you beat her fair and square. She didn't seem to harbor much of a grudge about it, nice girl. You should think about meeting up with her again if you're not shacked up with anybody, you know? I mean, of course, you probably are a gorgeous hunk of vault hunter like you. I bet you you're beating suitors left and right. Oh, look, you're blushing. Oh, I could just eat you up. Mr. Torg was so scared of trying to get a date for such a long time. He used to go to parties in high school and just stand in the back without talking to anybody. And I tried to tell him, I said, don't worry about chasing love. If you chase your dreams, then love will follow. See, that's the thing with that's the thing people don't get. You watch Echo films, they're, and they're just awful. They teach you that you... Uh, uh, 
that the only way to be with someone is to just pursue them over and over until they decide they like you. In reality, you know, when you like someone almost immediately, you can't convince someone to fall in love with you by just following them around. You look like a stalker. But if you do things you're interested in, like making guns that explode or killing mercenaries, then uh, pe people will see that confidence and, and skill that you have and they'll be attracted to it. But there's always a fine line between that kind of confidence and narcissism, you know? Oh, there's nothing worse than somebody who wants to be famous. I remember Mr. Torg... Uh, when Mr. Tork sold his first weapon tech to the board of directors, he was pretty egocentric for a while, taking pictures of himself and posting them to the Echo Net all the time, trying to hobnob with every celebrity that used his weapons. Oh, man. Oh. He came back home one day with a supermundle under each arm, and I said, Mr. Torque, what are you doing? You've lost sight of who you are. It's been weeks since you actually created a new gun, I said, and it was true. He had been more obsessed with being well-known for doing something great than actually doing something great. Thankfully, High Five listened to me and got to the work on what would eventually become the Kerblaster. You're a fan of the Kerblaster, right? That's my, always my favorite weapon. That and the Flacker, which I know a lot of people hate, but there's more to combat than just brute efficiency in this old lady's eyes. Style counts for something, and there's nothing quite like filling the air with tiny little explosions. Oh, it's like fireworks show, except the deaths aren't as sad and unexpected. Hey, actually, that reminds me, now that you're here, I wanted to throw some ideas at you for feedback. I'm a playwright in my spare time, and I was trying to write a story about an up-and-coming tournament fighter uh, who tries to find love in a gladiatorial arena, and I figured uh, you've got a lot of experience, so your feedback could be really valuable. Uh, so, so the play is called Broken Hearts and Broken Necks. <coughs> okay, um, uh, Scene one. Uh, scene one. Fade in on an arena just after a battle. Body parts litter the stage. A lone warrior stands in the middle of the stage, a spotlight illuminating her blood-stained armor. She stands, holding her sword triumphantly aloft. Valkyrie, is there no warrior who can challenge me? I must be destined to spend my life as the strongest, the bravest, and the most invincible warrior this galaxy have ever seen, for I am Valkyrie, scourge of the gladiatorial games. Oh. Valkyrie, as she shakes her head in despair. From stage left, enter Nodon, a janitor with a heavy heart and an even heavier conscience. He he begins sweeping the body parts into a bin, which is colored green. And remember that because it's a symbolic color that will come back until uh, melancholy overtakes him. Be sure be sure to remember that. That's actually very important. Uh, he drops his push room, uh, his push broom to the floor and falls to his knees before delivering a heart wrenching uh, uh, soliloquy. Uh, Note on. The blood cannot be washed away, not before, and not now. Even as I attempt to escape the past which haunts me still, I must live forever as a fraud, sweeping up the trash of others to hide my shame and avoid my pursuers? Must I forever remain on the fucking big words? Fuck. Of joyful combat, ever watchful, but never participating? Then... With a clatter of armor, Valkyrie re-enters from stage right. Valkyrie, good morrow, lowly janitor. I heard a noise and thought it worth investigating. Neuron, oh great Valkyrie, twas nothing but the wails of those souls you released from their bodies tonight. Souls that wail in agony as they fly upward to Valhalla. Valkyrie, fools, what have you... What have they to wail about? Their agonies are over, ended at the point of my sword. Mine, however, have only yet begun, for it is lonely at the top, and an unchallenged life is a boring one. Not on. If only I were able to tell her my true identity, I would give her a fight she would not soon forget. Back to Valkyrie. Yes, ma'am, boredom is a true 
tragedy. Ah, ah, may you one day find challenge in combat. Stooping, Nodon picks up a giant two-on bastard sword with almost no effort. Valkyrie, what is this? Excellent, Nodon, stage left. Oh, what strength this janitor possessed! Who is he to pick up the bastard sword with but two fingers? What hidden power does he hold? What secrets does he keep? I will endeavor to uncover his past in the hopes that our swords may cross in battle. Exit Valkyrie. End of scene one. Ahem! <coughs> <coughs> Scene 2. The interior of the governor's house. The table is set with a myriad of teas and biscuits. And oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even ask for feedback on the first scene. Did you like it? Oh, wonderful! I'll continue then. Uh, uh, scene 2. The governess enters from stage left. Governess, I refuse to respond to these absurd accusations. Her husband looks at her quizzically. Uh, governor, uh, what accusations? May those be a, a governess. Actually, you know what? I don't think I'm ready to get feedback. You know what? I don't think I'm ready to get feedback on the play yet. But what about you? What are you up to? Grandma, F tell Grandma Flexington all about it. I bet you've had some amazing adventures. Mr. Tor told me about this time y'all played bunkers and badasses together. He said it was one of the most fun and welcoming experiences of his life. Sorry, sweetie. But really, you and the Vault Hunters are his friends. Real pals. It wasn't easy for Mr. Torg to make friends at school when he had facial hair at age eight. Peck, or sorry, uh, facial hair at age eight, Peck at eight and a half, and dead parents at age nine. People found him intimidating, but I told him that he should be thankful for the fact that he looks different. Anyone, anyone who wouldn't be friends with you based on appearance wouldn't be a very good friend anyway but he really does like hanging out with all of you most people these days want tour getting for those pictures or to blow something up by flexing at it it's not often he gets to sit down and play games with people oh speaking of games did you play going back to the house yet it's this new echo simulation exploring a lob cabin you lived in when you were a kid there's no violence or anything you just walk around looking at cereal boxes and remembering people you made out with. I really like where Echo Sims have gone in the past few years, don't you? There seems to be a lot more of them with interesting things to do beyond shooting people. And the writing has gotten so tight and concise. Uh, for instance, did you ever play the Samurai's Marker? Whole game story was delightful through Haiku. Did Zero write it or is something? <laughs> no, I'm just joshing. I know you're too busy for that. Oh, but yeah, I was playing at the end of the point pointed gun last night on my Echo Sim, uh, Echo Sim player, and wow, is that funny. It's about a guy who punches people and smacks himself in the face with doors. Easily one of my best punch-related comedy sims ever. But, oh, I'm really looking forward to this game called Robot Hunter uh, Assassin Squadron, which is this really big, randomized survival game, uh, throwing bottles at trees and accidentally scaring birds. In the demo version, I scared a bird so hard it died. 10 out of 10 in my book. Uh, but what kind of things do you do for fun? You play any sports, you look like it. Might be into some of the more extreme stuff like spine hurling or psycho head volleyball. I knew an athlete a lot like you when I was younger. Her name was Nejo, and uh, she specifically gifted me a... At a uh, she's especially gifted at giblet tossed. Uh, that's an old pastime we had when I was younger. Ideal was you'd punch a convict and you'd see how far you could get their vis uh, viscera to fly across a big field. You got points based on distance and the size of the of the pieces. Uh, she won the final round of the giblet toss championship by getting the left eyeball across the 300 meter mark. They said she was juicing with iridium, but I think they were just angry that she dethroned the reigning champ, misogynistic Jeff. 
People really liked him for some reason. Hey, what's your favorite food? Mine's burgers, personally. People look at you like you're a pleb or something if you say you like burgers. But just think of all the things you can do with them. You can change them out. You can change out the patty. You can play around the toppings. Change the sides on what you have. You ever have burger with veggie chips? Gosh, I forgot all about the fries for... Uh, for about a year after I after I had the veggie chip combo, and I'm not even a vegetarian or anything, but those veggie patties they make on more the upper class worlds are crazy good, uh, better than real meat if you cook it just right. Uh, Mr. Tor tried to be a vegetarian once after he saw a fluff bear get run over by a truck. How long did you last again? Barely finished even uh, barely even finished the word vegetarian before he lunged at a skag chew. I was holding him I was holding in my left hand. Uh I nearly lost a finger by that, by the way. He's really crazy with that meat. Granted, he's always been partial to skag chews or skag bacon. Don't know why, since I always felt like skag tastes like old uh, tires and vomit, but to each their own. Taste is a funny thing. People say that your taste buds get more refined as time goes on, but they actually get worse and worse. Uh, so when Mr. Torg refused vegetables as a kid, it's because he was actually tasting how awful they were. When we old folks eat vegetables, we're all okay with it because we can't taste all the gross vitamins and stuff. Granted, vitamins are what have been keeping me along, keeping me here for so long, so I've been going. You get enough uh, B12 into your system. I mean, you can head but a freight train without so much as a bruise. That reminds me. I need to get my pills ready for the rest of the week. I have one of those little uh, mental uh, metal containers split into the different sections for each day. It's really helpful, and the sides are sharp enough that I can use to uh, ward off burglars if I need to. <laughs> so it's really nice for that. What else do I have to do this week? Probably head to the bazaar, uh, uh, pick up some of those frozen spider ant flanks, Gotta bring my coat, though, because uh, it's kind of chilly in the freezer section. Uh, what else do I need? Oh, I need Schwartzman's Candy Drops. Gosh, those are delicious. They're so smooth and sweet. Just thinking about them. I could, oh, I could go for one right now. Couldn't you? Do you think you could find me one? Oh, thank you so very much. I'll eat this later while sitting by the fireplace, telling Mr. Tork stories of days gone by. There's just nothing like a good roaring fireplace. Is there something uh, something healing and safe? Maybe that's why our families like explosions so much. They're basically just like big fireplaces. Every explosion feels just like coming home. Oh, maybe that'll be a good slogan for the Tork Corporation. Don't you think, High Five? Oh, don't be silly. It's a wonderful slogan slogan and you know it i used to come up with slogans for a living when i was in my teens i i came up with this jingle for professor gun sites can't miss scopes how did it go again oh yeah if you try to shoot but miss a lot then uh professor gun sites scopes a shot and then they played a gunshot sound effect and someone's going ah it was cute but gosh i've been talking for a while now haven't i thanks for bringing your friends to listen to an old woman uh, ramble for a while i can't tell you how great it is to have somebody new to talk to especially a vault hunter oh and one more thing no, actually, that could probably wait. Just something about vaults and the end of the universe. Anyway, here, I like to, I always spoil my friends just like I spoil my grandson. Enjoy it. <laughs>